I'm a mother in pain, a mother who's very hurt, a mother who's upset because this should have never been happened to my son. Welcome. If you're new via here, be sure to click the subscribe button and also click the bell icon so that you'll be notified about videos uploaded from this channel. People, people, wa guan, wa guan. I hope everybody's having a fantastic Sunday. I want to eat on a Sunday dinner and enjoy on myself. Right now, I know so from the summer forward, I'm going to come with the latest updates so I can get right into it. Seven men are in custody following a major police operation in St. Elizabeth yesterday. The special operation involved personnel assigned to the area and three police divisions from the parishes of St. Elizabeth, Clarendon and Manchester. According to reports, the operation led the police to paper in St. Elizabeth, where investigators theorized that there were seven suspects involved in lottery scamming. At the end of the special operation, seven men were taken into custody for questioning. Investigators also seized what is commonly known as lead sheets, bearing names, contact numbers, and email addresses of thousands of individuals residing overseas. A laptop computer and several mobile phones were also confiscated. The operation covered a number of communities in St. Elizabeth. A man gets slapped by unknown assailants at a candle night in Westmoreland on Saturday night. The deceased has been identified as 34-year-old Sean Johnson, otherwise called English, a laborer of the community. Reports from the Savalamar police are that about 9 p.m., Johnson and other residents were attending a candlelight when explosions were heard. The police were alerted and on their arrival, Johnson was seen with multiple gunshot wounds. The scene was subsequently processed and the body was removed to the morgue pending a post-mortem examination. Investigations are ongoing. A team from the St. James Police Division seized an illegal firearm and 18 rounds of ammunition during an operation on Tank Road in Cambridge in the parish on Thursday, September 15. Four persons, including a woman, were taken into custody in relation to the fine. Reports from the Cambridge Police are that about 6 a.m., law enforcers were in the area when a premises that was occupied by the four individuals were searched. During the search, a Taurus 9mm pistol with a magazine containing eight 9mm rounds of ammunition was reportedly found in a room of the dwelling. All four occupants were taken into custody. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigations. In addition to that, a man and a woman were arrested in connection with the seizure of an illegal firearm in Olmsted St. Catherine, also on Thursday, September 15. Reports are that about 4.45 p.m., a police team was in the community when they saw a man sitting beside the roadway. The man had a red object in his hand and there was a woman beside him. The man reportedly got up and went into a yard immediately upon seeing the police followed by the woman. His actions aroused the suspicion of the police team and was pursued. When accosted, the man was found attempting to hide a red object. It was retrieved and found to be a browning 9mm pistol. A drink bottle was also found with four 9mm rounds of ammunition in Carmel. Both were arrested. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigations. Police sources in St. Catherine have indicated that a shooting incident in Spring Village, St. Catherine on Sunday afternoon has left three persons dead and at least six nursing injuries. Unconfirmed reports are that the incident occurred at a football match in the community. More details soon. It has been reported that a man who goes by the name of Jahir was fatally shot last night in the vicinity of Shooter's Hill. The reason for the attack is currently unclear at this time. An alert has been activated for 17-year-old Patrine Morgan of Kingston 20 who have been missing since Thursday, September 15. She's of dark complexion, slim built and about 5 feet 5 inches tall. Reports on the Spanish Town Police are that about 6.45 a.m. Patrine was last seen in Trial Heights, St. Catherine wearing a white blouse, blue jeans and a pair of black slippers. She has not been heard from since. 40-year-old Damian Miller, a chef of Whitehall Avenue, St. Andrew, has been missing since Saturday, September 11. He's of dark complexion, medium built, and is about 107 centimeters tall. Reports from the Constant Spring Police are that Miller was last seen in his community. When last seen, he was wearing a white shirt, black pants, and a pair of black shoes. He has not been heard from since. People, this kind of tricky, you know, because they must say the man is of dark complexion, yet still the picture where they must show the public, the man bleach out. 
And when I say bleach out, I don't talk about standard brown, you know, say, you just a rub for get little color. I tell you, say the man white. In fully white out. So I'm going to put the picture of this man on the thumbnail so you can see it and have an idea of what him really look like. Just look into him features then because we don't know if he's going to get back black or anything like that. But just look into him features then if you want to see him anywhere, please give up information on him to the nearest police station. We're moving right along. The police have identified two men who get slapped with at a jerk center and a bar in Williamsfield, Manchester on Friday as brothers. They are Mark McLean and his younger brother, Kurt McLean. A third man who was shot and injured in the incident has been identified as a worker on the May Pen to Williamsfield leg of the Highway 2000. A highly placed police source told our news team that the McLean brothers are from Cassava Peace in St. Andrew. The police theorized that the brothers were trailed from St. Andrew to Manchester by gunmen. A police report said shortly after midday, the brothers and a woman were traveling in a Mercedes-Benz motor car when they stopped at a jerk center and bar in Williamsfield. When the brothers exit the vehicle, police say gunmen traveling in a motor car opened fire eating them. The highway worker who had gone into the jerk center for lunch was shot during the ordeal. The senior police source said Mark McLean had survived a contract eight two years ago in Barbican, St. Andrew. The police theorized that both attacks are linked to the victim's past. So it seems as if these men were watching the brothers for a short period of time. Them just follow them come out to Kingston because them probably no want the eyes upon them. But the police are terrorizing, as I said earlier, that this attack is from the men past. So it seems as if they are involved in criminal activities. The police them never got in details, so we don't know specifically what activities they were involved in, but it looked like them did mix up bad. Because, as said earlier, Mark escaped an attack two years ago. And after two years, them still want Mark. What Mark could I really involve in her? When you think about it, Mark often mix up in a something and not just one the police said the two of them. Past life never really look good. So I guess them repo them so. But what really a puzzle me is the woman. The woman that were traveling with them. Where is she? Nothing at all happened to she. And not just that. Since nothing never happened to her, she never see what happened. She never see who carry out the act. Some of us might assume that she probably set it up. She probably involved in some form of way. But things do happen. I mean, I feel... But things really do happen and she not must involve in her. She just probably lucky she never step out of the vehicle soon enough. You get what I say? But if she not involve any way at all, she must see something. She must glimpse something. Something. You mean for tell me so them just come and gone and she not see nothing. Everything just fly past for her face so, and she not get enough on my arm. A coincidence that? 